Everybody, I am here today with one of the best artists in Atlanta. She's been a very big inspiration to myself. Um, I've heard her numerous times. I love her music, I love her words, I love her personality, I love her spirit, and I love her mother too. Hey, Mom. <laughs> as well as she. sophomore student at Spelman and she was killed accidentally on Clark campus. Um, so I don't know if they were students but um, a group of young people got into a brawl and someone had a gun and shot a bullet and a stray bullet shot and killed her and um, this was last September of 09 and when I saw the story on the news you know for some reason it just really just touched me deeply I just felt like I wanted to do something. So the, the, I mean, the first thing I wrote was, the first thing I did was write a song, you know? And then after that, you know, me and my mom were talking and I reached out to Jasmine Lynn's mother and some artists that I knew and, I was, and some nonprofits that have youth initiative programs. Cause I feel like if we reach young people at those early ages and when they get older, they tend to make better decisions. So I had a couple of friends that had a few nonprofits and so Initially, we decided to have an event to raise funds to help these nonprofits that wanted to help young people in the community. So that was the first event that was last December, and Ricky Smiley was my host. Arrested Development was there. Um, Ishii from Arrested Development performed Abyss. A lot of people in Atlanta know who Abyss is, poet, performs. And we had a good, you know, a good evening. So now I'm kind of revamping it and I'm working on making it into a scholarship for students, you know, to provide, you know, some funding for them, perhaps to get the books that they need for those classes that they're taking at school. So. I really appreciate it. And, I mean, you said a lot, so <laughs> I don't know what I would call myself, but thank you. <laughs> but that's true. To me, um, you know, as being, you know, what I call myself a semi-writer. And, you know, a vocalist. Don't call yourself that. You are a writer. But, you know, say what you, the say what right, you want to be. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly. right. I should do that. You know what people say? You need to hush. No, I don't. <laughs> when, people, when people say, um, I'm an aspiring actress or an aspiring performer, it's an aspiring writer. You're not aspiring. You're, you, you're doing it. Yeah. You know, you just, you just always get better. You just always get better. You See, know? and that's why you, I think you're one of the best artists. I think that's very because nice. you're in, you know, because sometimes it goes beyond just having the gift and the talent. Because there's a lot of people we and you know that that have the gift and the talent, but they don't have substance sometimes. Or so, for some people, it may be the drive that they don't have. Or some people, they don't have that substance that you know that that warm feeling when you meet them, when you see them. You know, and of course, some might be it may be a role they're playing, but still you. have to get out there you know um, and also you have to give something give people something to be interested in like even now you know I may know a lot of people in the business but it's, I still have to do work right. as an artist to get to the next level the bug was trying to get you yeah <laughs> you know so it's I don't think it's very hard at all to network there's lots of industry events here that you can attend you know, you just get in and meet people, and um, I feel like, um, he, he said as an artist, get out there and performing live is very important, so people get a chance to know who you are until you perform, and you start to build like a reputation that way as well, too. And I think one of the best things that I remember you saying was you told about how you wanted to sing, I may be wrong about the person, but I remember you saying that you were comparing your voice to different people. Yeah. And you had to re realize that 
um, you know, that you weren't them and yeah. that you may not sound like them. Yeah, and so when I was, we'll talk, let's talk about that a little bit. So I don't even know where this came from because my parents always encouraged me. They always said I was beautiful. They always said I sounded great. They, so for some reason I was very insecure about not just how I sounded, but how my features, mm -hmm. how I look. I didn't feel like I was beautiful. I didn't feel like I was pretty. I had no, no idea like where this came from. But yeah, I, when I was little, you know, because I'm a black girl, but growing up, you know, I'm playing the guitar and I'm very folky and very different and my voice is very different. So I would kind of feel embarrassed or ashamed that I, I didn't have like that gospel R&B voice, you know, like Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey growing up, you know, because I'm a black girl and I don't sound <laughs> black, right. you know. But, see, my dad introduced me to Nina Simone. Mm -hmm. And when I heard Nina Simone, I was like, oh, wow, hey, we have all kind of different sounds. Exactly. So it's okay for me to sound like that, you know? And then, of course, you know, I found Tracy Chapman along my way. You know, I was like, okay, well, these, these artists really helped me to embrace, you know, me as an artist. And so, oh, it's okay. I don't have to sound like that, right. per se, and be awesome. It's never like, what type of music do you sing? Mm -hmm. It's more, they've already characterized Yeah, in but, but I think, you know, and that's okay too. Yeah. Because people need things to compare to. And, you know, a lot of times people ask me, do you mind if I call you this or that? It's like, you can call me whatever you want to call me. It's like, you know, you have your own definition of what you do, you know, and maybe I have my own definition of what I do. And it's okay if people want to label it or categorize it a certain way. That's fine. Let them do that. That's, you know, it doesn't hurt. You know, that's fine. You know. So I know a lot of artists are like, oh, I don't want to be called so and so. No, doesn't matter. <laughs> Just do what you do, you know. Right. doesn't matter. So who, who would you work with if you had an opportunity to do? Oh, I always say Common. I like Common. What's up? I see. I read somewhere that that uh, maybe not now since you possibly found your soulmate, but that you was like Common was like a well, semi crush for you. Common almost. is hot. I, I, <laughs> he's he's super handsome, and I actually met him on the uh, the set of Girlfriends mm -hmm. when Girlfriends was on air. I did an episode, and he was on the, he was on the episode, and um, Saul Williams was on the episode. So I got to meet them on the episode, and both of them were very nice. But yeah, he's. I would say crush. You know, <laughs> it's not that it's deep. Not huh? really, it's not really that deep, but you know. Well, I wrote that song, Souls Mate, when I was in LA about a year before I moved to Atlanta. And you know how, like you said, there's life from death and the power of the tongue. So I, I was speaking what I wanted. You know, a lot of times in my song, I speak what I want. Like the song, Life is Beautiful, I say every day it's better than the last. I choose to believe this perspective. So I, a lot of times, I may not be feeling that like that at the time that I'm writing it, or I may be why I just like to write stuff that I want to have, like affirmations. So Soul's Mate is like my affirmation song about finally, you know, like I know you're out there somewhere. It's like I'm, I would, it's a song to him before I even met him. So that's where I was at that point. I was like, hey, I'm, I don't know where you are, but this song is for you. You're out there somewhere. Yeah, I know you are. I know. <laughs> Gotta be. You know, I just believed it, you know. Now, I've heard that you may be working on a project right now. Is that true? I'm always working on a project. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know You where? always work on your projects. <laughs> do you, I mean, have, so have you been in the studio laying down also? I have been in the studio also? in the past year, you know, to the show and working on the album and getting piece by piece by piece together so it's coming along I ha absolutely have no idea when it's all gonna be done or when I'll be able to release something I think you know, I'm you know some good things are happening right now you know as I'm in this interview with you so who knows I I just stopped putting a, a deadline and a date on stuff I was just like well this is my goal and I'm just gonna keep working and working and working at it because every time I would get the deadline, I was like, it, it didn't happen yet. So it was like, sometimes you just can't put a date on stuff. You just keep working, working, working. 
And I think sometimes that's what messes up. Yeah. Because we're looking so at the date mm -hmm. that we don't look at the goal as much. Yeah. You know, um, because sometimes things just aren't meant to happen at that moment. Right, you know, it's right. just not the right time. And I'm time. glad. I'm glad it's not done because, you know, in the interim, I've written some really cool songs that would have been on the album if I had completed it already. So it's like, okay, I got a couple cool more songs to put on there or replace, you know, another song or whatever. So I feel like it'll happen exactly when I'm ready. That's another thing. It's like sometimes we think we're ready, but we're really not ready. And it's supposed to happen. Um, I'm on Facebook, Leaf Newman on Facebook, YouTube, Leaps Music. The word leaf, like it's spelled L E A F, the word S in music. Um, I'm on Twitter, Leaf Newman. And then you can email myself, my manager, at Allison Newman at Hotmail. That's Allison with one L and just one N in between the Allison and Newman. So the N connects it, Allison Newman at Hotmail.